Bum, bum, bum. You're going to run to the chair. No, she never runs to the chair. Gracefully. That's it. And now you can talk in a low voice because now we have our new. We're, we're evolving. We're getting better. Hopefully you hear us better. I, I think they do hear us better. And I hope this works for you guys. Because uh, today is the last day of what? The settlement. The uh, NAR settlement. Yes. 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 <laughs> what does that mean to you, Carrie? I mean, she's going to be even more busier than ever. Yes, it does. So, um, yeah, so I have a couple of questions. So, how have I been this week? How have you, you been? You got to, like, how do you think I've reacted so far? Oh, I think you've been. Be honest. Like you're you're kind of cool, and then there's some things where you're like, "Oh my god!" I think I was on the phone today, and one of the things that we had when I was on the phone was um, we came across we, the changes that are coming. It's like no, so we still don't real. It's not clear. I think we're still like kind of debating whether it's been cleared up or not, um, mm -hmm. and like whether the whole we're really seeing like some clarity, clear clarity uh, coming forward. So this is a big change for everybody involved. So if you haven't been paying attention, the National Association of Realtors, Department of Justice, and uh, based on the lawsuit, says we have to change practices. There's things that, oh, I like to talk about, but I don't want to talk about it just yet because I haven't there's still problems here and i think with some of the things that they i think they're trying to avoid like with this lawsuit there'll be new problems created out of it and whether it's tying or agreements and things like that there's going to be some back and forth with this because i do think for a certain degree the one thing this was able to do was build a sense of transparency uh, about the process, and I'd rather I'd rather have seen this go with a sense that um, uh, if there was agent commission to be paid, not that we change it off the MLS, but post it uh, more publicly for transparency purposes than eliminate it because I don't think it's going to help with efficiency. But that's my take. I'm not going to say anything more than that. But we're going to talk about. You have questions. Some of the hardest of the questions I think that I've ever had to answer since doing these things. You really, you're really about to hit me with some with some <laughs> things about what I think. And for me, just kind of to kind of give it. This is I've been at this for 18 years, um, and one of the things that I've been really focused on. I mean, I've always been on the more technical digital end of the business, um, so. We're very media immersive. We're very tech savvy. So I, I, I have some compass in knowing that we have some really good bones about what we are doing here. Yeah. And we, like the parameters are really good uh, like for us to move forward with everything. But I think we're going to touch on that question in one of these questions oh, moving yeah. forward. Definitely one of the questions here. So I guess I'll just... yeah, just dive right in. Unless we're going to ask, ask your plans for the weekend, but uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. you don't want to publicly announce those. No, but, okay, so my first question for you is... If you really want entertainment, we'll get into that now. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first question for you is, can you explain how the recent NAR settlement will specifically impact buyer's agent compensation in the way commissions are handled? Um, the NAR settlement, basically, what it is, the buyer's agents, are, as a buyer's agent, like I said, we're touching on this, this is the last day. This is the last day of the regular course of business in real estate. Uh, tomorrow is the official end of the old and no, today is the end. Five o'clock, I mean, 12 o'clock tonight expires. Tomorrow morning, we're waking up to a new world. So what's going to happen is buyers will 
uh, have to enter into a relationship with the agent that's going to be showing them houses. And there's all sorts of type of arrangements within that, um, within those type of agreements. But for once, people thought the sellers would pay for that service. Um, it's not to say it won't happen to, to a certain degree, but in the degree that we understand it in the MLS, it, it won't be as it won't be there. Uh, and there's no guarantee of compensation. It's not supposed to be really, they try to say the seller's not to pay, pay the commission for the buyer's agent. Yes. It's, it's very, uh, there's gonna be some stresses on that, but I do think um, the agent compensation, until these first few months pass, I, I, it's, it's, this is a tough question to answer with any, we know there's there's a parameter to move forward with. I'm not sure if we're ready to get to um, the part is exactly how this is going to look because it could be massive amounts of chaos and confusion in the next few months about how this is going to look. Uh, it, we know the way it's structured to look, but it's like you know, really it's. <laughs> Uh, if you ever watched the movie Titanic, when they see the iceberg and they want to flip the switch and go in reverse, and they say, mm -hmm. they say, you know, they're like turning the steam, uh, the steam propulsion around to, to reverse the engine thrusters. Yeah. It's like what happens, and I, it's we're at that point. But like this is like, it's like, it's here, mm -hmm. it's right ahead, and it's like, you know, yeah. and a lot of people think. You know, from the sentiments aren't great out there, and I just, I, and, and may even impact uh, the market somewhat. It can. This is pretty disruptive in terms of how this is going to look on the marketplace as a whole, uh, and it can. You know, until this really shakes out, it can slow things down. And I think overall, I think it will uh, slow things down a little bit. But anyway, let's get into the next question. So, what are the most like significant changes? you think that um, you could expect to see in the real estate market? Well, the, the most significant change is, <laughs> we're really going to have to, uh, I think value, value propositions are going to have to be evaluated. And, and I think this is a problem. This is not, I don't think the problem was limited to, to today. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, uh, I think it may uh, open up some structural failures that were kind of masked over by the idea that how the business operates and where we're supposed to be as a business, as an entity, uh, as an individual entity, and how individually, how individual entities, meaning how single companies handle their business, mm -hmm. uh, maybe at the forefront. And uh, that's not something we're kind of too worried about because infrastructurally I think we've been set up for this type of scenario for many years yes. uh, where it's not like um, we necessarily have to rely too much on MLS to get the message out about a particular house but if you, the marketing infrastructure now is going to make a whole bunch of difference and I think I think we'll we will get to that question at some point uh, how they, it's just uh, how this is going to um, this is more a market question, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do see that uh, we're going to have to change the way we do things. Some people won't adapt or can't adapt because I do think it's not like changing a gear here that like you could change your business model in five minutes. These types of things are very slow moving. Uh, it's a very slow moving process especially in something so drastic as real estate that to reevaluate how you're doing business and refocusing it into a uh, meaningful understanding for sellers and buyers uh, to say, this is the advantages versus disadvantages. We've kind of sloshed ourselves into a big, like one pool, every kind of thing kind of looks the same. I could pick an agent for this and I could pick an agent for that. And basically the results would be the same it's not true, but there is a, a kind of generalized understanding that that's the way things work. And it's not really the case. So um, 
there'll be some really innovative models that come out of it. And there'll be things that I feel like we're going to be able to change moving forward uh, with how we structure our businesses, how we, how we define our value propositions. And this is where it's got the, we'll get to it at some point, but I really think that at the individual agent level, there's going to have some more difficulties um, than not, because I think there's certain infrastructure, uh, infrastructurally this changes how you're going to have to deliver services and it's not going to save anybody any money, I don't believe. Uh, it's it, the idea that it changes anything. It's like I got to efficiency. You can't flick a pen because I do think there's a structural part of this process that makes the efficiency what it is. I don't think because there's an idea that like I've seen it multiple times and I think the five and six percent commission thing and I don't think that's the case and not everything is handled at those rates. I can tell you locally it certainly isn't. Um, you know, it, there's no standardized commissions, and I think people may make it sound like, well, you're going to see lowering of a, the 5 to 6% commissions. I mean, maybe some parts of the country, and that's my biggest thing with this lawsuit. It's not everywhere that these type of things exist, but it is a big lump. Uh, but I I do see that the, the biggest thing in, in the market moving forward, it's going to slow it down. Um, we're going to slow things down. If anybody doesn't think so, they, they're more free to debate it here. Yes. But um, I've been doing it long enough to know that it's just, it's going to, you know, I, I, I don't want to make this a whole three hour session because <laughs> I know you have to, you, you have to go home at some point. <laughs> yes. Maybe go home. <laughs> no. um, so my next question is, Will these changes favor experienced agents and squeeze out newer ones? And um, how will this affect the industry and how will you address that? That's a great question. Yeah. Um, the answer in short is it depends. No, if you're a newer agent, I don't believe that you're going to see. If you're doing the things that this is where um, I, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again because we have, and I'm very fortunate because we have some good, talented people here, brand new agents who are succeeding, uh, especially like on the selling side, and that's not typical of the business. Um, the synergies associated with success, if you're not clear about what they are and how the broker agent relationship coexists to make a better environment to succeed you're missing something and, I, and i'm going to say this you know this is going to be and some people are going to disagree uh, but uh, i i try to keep people in line with the fact that the first consideration of real estate is whether or not the service quotient for the homeowner is very apparent so it has to be apparent to the degree that there's a noticeable difference between what that agent does and what we not just my name not just what we do structurally to help a homeowner succeed in this process is going to be what we have to address with the agents here so but that's a synergistic relationship and because you know not even so our even our infrastructure doesn't we don't command the, the type of staff internally to even handle if we had 75 people doing this, yeah. you're, you're, <laughs> you're, you may be, you know, you, you'd have to work 75 hours a week. We'd have to duplicate you. Um, uh, but structurally, what's going to happen is um, the synergy has to be correct. And the infrastructure has to be uh, made to make you stand apart from competition. And unfortunately, the problem, the biggest problem is, is that the barrier to entry will be raised considerably because of the costs associated with doing business now. Um, and because people think like, okay, we do all these things infrastructurally, you know, our infrastructure over the course, and I'll tell you what it is, over the course of just, you know, six, seven years, eight years, we've spent over a million dollars yeah. in infrastructure costs. And that's 
the, that's what people don't, they can't see it because it's not a building. So as he said, oh, I see a million dollar house. It's like, well, yeah, it's a million dollar house. But when you traffic a million plus people to platforms, there's a lot of people, efforts combined over the time and effort. The same way you build blocks on a house, you have to be able to build that. And this is where the synergy comes in between agent and brokerage, making sure that we could actually put together a comprehensive strategy to advance uh, the seller's needs to get a house sold for more at the top, pro proper exposure levels. But I do think from a new agent to old agent, I think in both, I don't think anyone's going to be equally impacted unless we start keying in on like what this is supposed to look like. And it's not, this is not something you could spin your wheels on and then change your whole direction, your operational direction in 10 minutes time. And this is why proper planning about how this is supposed to look, which we've been planning for years and not even the last few months, is that we knew this would happen and we need to set up our, our infrastructure to help address this, this particular problem. But I, I do think now the agent broker synergy had better start meeting what I believe is sorely lacked in the, for the consumer. And I think one of the things is we talk too much about um, what, we're, what, what individuals are making out of the transaction and what the consumer is getting out of it. And that experience is not necessarily, you know, and I see it too often. It's like, well, you know, we, I, everybody likes to make money. I get that part. But I think one of the things is, is like we need to consider what this means to the people we serve. And when we start thinking about that first, that the secondary part is obviously if you're building a better business, you're going the better, better business is going to build better revenue if that's what you're after. Um, but I think too much of this goes into, well, I can get stock options. I get, it's like this is it's gotten too far away from what we need to be doing. And most of the type of. And, you know, this is where the lawsuit is going to change the playing field, because th this stuff which simply was just used to kind of be freewheeling marketing, especially, I think you're not going to be able to do that anymore. It's very structurally different and the synergy has got to be there. And it's not guys, it's not like this is what I, I'm trying to say this in a way that's like, it disregards like everything that's being done. No, you have to think of it with common sense. You know, you, I always say, and I take teach agents. The one thing I teach the newer agents is, does common sense play a role? You think about it from sitting in the seat opposite you. Make sure when you do things publicly, the way it looks opposite from you, because that's really what the, the, the parameters for doing business are. Is it the perception and the, or, and the reality matching up? And the problem is I see that it's not. You know, there's certain things that I don't think that um, the consumer is like, especially, you know, it's like there's certain things to celebrate and there's certain things not to say that like not that's not personal so but like i i do think that there's a certain degree of um hubris that it's that easy and that it could just be uh without thinking about what the homeowner is thinking about when because we do there's no we uh, we're on appointments i so i listen to a lot of people in a week so I can't tell you I have a very good sample size of what I hear. And that's the, one of the things about being out and being a broker that's out with the agents a lot is listening to their stories and they're not get very, <laughs> the, the next advance is the chairs, I promise. Uh, that's going to be the next improvement here. But it's an interesting time. And I do think the synergy, the synergistic relationships now had better be uh, confined to uh, infrastructure requirements to do the business. I, I do, do think that's going to be the biggest thing. And we're in, a, we're in a different age. We're in a digital age that's never been really tapped into yet, especially with the advent of artificial intelligence. There's a lot of threats that still exist currently to the, the way we do things. And let's not, let's not paint this with any other brush. It's going to change things fundamentally. That's all I have to say on that. <laughs> that was your question. I know I elaborate a lot, so I have to put a little punctuation at the end. <laughs> yeah. um, so now with buyers negotiating agent fees up front, could this damage trust between agents and clients? Do you think? Um, I don't think it's going to damage. It's, it's going to be a... It, that. 
I, I don't think from that standpoint there's going to be any change really in, in that, you know, how it's going to affect the relationship between, you know, one of the things is, is like the fast food approach is going to be hard to do because you're going to have people um, who are looking for housing. And unlike when you click the button, you know who is going to get there and there's no fee associated with seeing houses. That's not going to be on the table. Um, so you have to really put that in perspective. It's not going to be on the table. And, you know, uh, and some people are like, oh, it's a waste of time. I mean, but what's going to happen is, is that uh, with that happening, the amount of available people to actually assist is going to be likely, I, I do believe at the end of the day, it's going to decline. Um, because you do need to have there, are, and there's some people who probably may not do it, but you're, you're risking quite a bit, whether you're even going to get compensation or not, uh, for, for going out with buyers and finding a house and whether that, but I expect the first few months to be the wild west of it. I think it's going to be a little, little crazy, but I, I don't think it's going to change much of the relationship other than the fact that that relationship is going to be set in stone with the contract like the seller side and that's there's a lot of hesitation so i i don't think that's going to change uh it's not going to change trust levels it's just going to maybe remove uh any trust and just go straight to the person that's listing the house as being the consideration which doesn't necessarily favor the buyer either but that's a whole you know i don't want to get off on that topic so we can keep moseying on do you think that this will lead to more agents leaving the industry? Yes, unequivocally. Unequivocally, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to fundamentally. You got. I. I, I really believe at the end of the day, it's going to. It's going to reset the entire model. Mm -hmm. I, I. I've said it. I, I thought it. I think it's going to reset the model, um, and you, it's going to change things drastically. Uh, do I think? We spend a lot of people like time educating people on process and why, like how to differentiate this value perspectives that has to be really, really apparent to you. And it better be more than compensation packages, because I do think at the end of the day, consistency will always outgun. I, I, I've, I've worked on a team and like, I, you know, some people say, uh, oh, well, you know, I don't make as much per transaction. I, the, the biggest thing is, I made more making less because I was consistent because it filled in the holes that it would be. So people think like, oh, I'm making less. I mean, no, it's consistency. Consistency will always win. I don't care what it is. It's like sports. It's like baseball. It's like working out. If you're consistent, you do perform better. Yeah. And then what happens is, is that too many people try to match. If they say, oh, well, they look at a transaction, how much I make at the end of the transaction. But if you could say, I could do five of these versus two, you'd still, you're, you're still much better. And I, this, but this is, but you better start thinking about synergistic relationships because if they don't exist, and I'd say this, look, there's a fair amount of agents that do a very good job uh, marketing what they do. I, I just think it's so few that it's not, it's, it's, uh, it, it's tiny. And you're talking about a whole entire industry that's not one of the things and you should know this is not we it's not so much just like doing a video it's logistics yes the, just like knowing the platforms to share to how many things we have to maintain mm -hmm. <laughs> people don't even know it's like there's a lot of stuff to maintain with the infrastructure maintenance it's like the owning a building digital your digital infrastructure is like owning a building new stuff is coming out. We have to make adjustments. And it's like, that could be changing constantly. And, you know, I mean, fortunately with, with some of the new tools that are out, it's, it's definitely simplified the process a bit. Um, but it, the agility, when you're selling houses and you're trying to do 50,000 things, and not every agent could be put in the position of going out and saying, oh, I could be the best marketer in the world, and the best agent in the world, and the best this in the world, the best that in the world. And it's like, okay, but my day is only 14 hours and now I got to make 17 hours work. And this is where if you have consistency and it's working hand in hand, 
you're going to improve what you're doing as an agent and you're going to be more consistent doing it. And that's going to be the principally who's going to do better overall. Sustainability of your business is always, it should always be preferenced around sustainability uh, because this is the type of market that if you don't pay attention to fundamentals, they'll swing back the other way. And because the fundamentals now, oh, it made sense to do this then because I, I definitely made more doing it this way then. And then when it changes back, it's not set up, they're not set up. And it's like, then it's like a tsunami. And then they try to readjust, re-scramble to do those things. And by the time they figure this all out, months, if not years pass by and the types of costs associated with doing what you to, to manage an infrastructure that's going to have a sense of people over they underestimate the cost of this. It's not what it was. When I first started it, I think my entire website, which was considered to be the first class of the first class of website mm -hmm. was I think $10,000. $10, $10,000? And it was considered to be the top of the line. Now, if you talk about over the course of the 18 years that I've been doing this, if I told you all the costs associated with maintaining that, you, I, I could buy a house in Toad Hill. I'm dead serious. That's how much yeah, it costs to maintain that. And people are like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, it took that much money to do. And that's, people are like, oh, how do you get to the, I said, you, this is no, this is no small feat to like achieve certain results. And it's like, people dismiss it as being like, um, Oh, it's like magic wands. No, it's literally 14 hour days struggling to, it's, it's not the simplest thing. It's not. And, uh, but if it, it's, and that's where I think synergistic relationships with agents and, and things like that are going to help make agents succeed better, even newer ones. Cause I've proven the fact that you can get a new agent. There's nothing in, there's very few. I don't know if there's any example, if someone knows one that has listed 80% of their business in their first year, first year in a low inventory market, says that we're doing something different here. And I think that the, the cause and effect relationship between that is not, yeah, she, and that's not to say, that's not to diminish her work. She's a very hard worker. Yes. But what the synergistic strategy that she has something that she could rely on, yeah. on the backside of this is that it's like, okay, I'm being back to going into something and not being left to my own devices to figure it out. And I think that's where I always said this. Um, if you want success, you have to redefine the strategy. We sell houses here 60, 70 miles away from where we're located. We, we reach places uh, in California. Uh, we have people that call us in California. We have people because our infrastructure permits that. And that's uh, that's where we, we figure we we... We define ourselves to the sellers that, okay, we're not just limited to just doing this. And if, because we don't have this anymore, we, we, the chances of success are less. Uh, let's not leave it there. Let's, and that's, that is an effort. And that's, and you know, this is a time where that's something like that pays off uh, over the long haul. I think when you make those types of investments and time and people, um, and I've always said that people, um, they 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 make the strategy uh so i i do have a sense of optimism moving forward this is not the worst thing in the world for us because i really do think it's going to define with a very big exclamation point that what we've been working so hard on the last few years is actually really worth something now um and i think that's bearing out i think i think some of the tests that i wanted to see happen has has happened and you know we always doing testing uh, I'm always testing the testing the thing, but uh, I'm I'm going on and on, and let's that's that's uh, that's that's what we need to do is to get on to keep this moving. Yes. Yes, I could, I could we can go on to this. I could talk for like six hours about this. <laughs> if I get redundant, please slap me. Oh, bad no, but I think it's it's a chat. It's a, it's an interesting time. This yeah. is the last day. This is the. The last day of the old era, the new era. So with, this is a pretty earth-shaking day. I know it is. It's like this, this is a change yeah. of everything we know. Yeah, it's um, going to be different. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's going to change a lot. Um, now, 
Mm-hmm. Will agents still want to represent buyers in lower price markets if they're paying the fees themselves? Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> Will they want? Uh, if I could answer that off the bat, I, I don't know. Look, I mean, if, if it, it's a risk reward, uh, <laughs> if I, if, yeah, I mean, you can't force people to do a job that they don't want to do. And if this is, if, it, if that's the attempt here, it's going to fail miserably. If the attempt is I'm going to lower the, you, there's going to be a barrier of entry that's not worth pursuing. And then, then you're not servicing anybody. And what will happen is by natural progression, prices for these services will just go up again and people aren't going to be happy. You you cannot make, whether we believe it or not, there's with a degree of efficiency with the system and the speed at which you could go house to house to house to house within a day, you're disrupting that system very, you know, because people are just, they're not going to put the time in. Not to say that they're not willing to put the time in, but is is the risk going to be the worst the reward? And, you know, does all uh, you know in some of these markets, will it absolutely affect uh, the ability to even get service? It might. Mm. It might, but I, I, it's too soon to tell. Uh, will buyers now need to cover their agent fees more often? Yeah, I mean, basically, there is the ability for. Um, for sellers to compensate uh, buy side agents. Um, to what degree? I, I don't. I I don't know how that pans out. I really don't know. I, I can't tell you. Like, um, I think there's a, some over reliance on the fact that that, that someone else is going to do it. And that's this is what I mean about like. You can't take on business that you have, you have not, you know, you you can't crutch on the MLS to do your marketing. Uh, it's just you can't. And it, like you got to be able to, to to define yourself, and you know, the, you have to define what why the cost is. If if I, the number one question I get from people like specifically for fit sale by owner, it's like, okay, what why am I paying this? It cost me thirty thousand dollars. What, what's being? What's happening? Mm-hmm. That's costing me this kind of money. You know, it's a lot of money, uh, and they don't care how it's split. People say, "Oh, well, I got to pay this." Gotta, the, the consumer only knows one thing, and I don't blame them. They know it's thirty thousand, forty thousand, whatever it may be. They want to know what the hell they're paying for, and they don't care who it's splitting to. It's out of their pocket. It doesn't matter. And I, if you flip that around, and they were in the same position. It'd be like, why I pay forty thousand dollars for this car? It's like they want to know what it is that it's going to happen, yeah. not just, well, this is what it is. No, uh, you, this is. Oh, yeah, that's a tough one, though. I, it's there's a lot of things that time are going to really show themselves to be what it is, mm-hmm. and I'll leave it at that. So as fees become more transparent, could real estate services become commoditized with buyers just picking the cheapest agent? Sure. Yeah, I mean the simple answer is yes. Could it be commo- Yes. Yes. My, you know, the biggest thing that I worry. I mean. People, I mean, uh, human talent as a general, we're, even myself, we're all essentially a commodity in the sense that we're providing value of, of some, some, we, we have a, a skill that, that provides value that, that's compensated for and whatever. And if it's a utility, you know, then it's a commodity. But like, I mean, we're all to a certain degree have a value standard. Um, the real question is, is you have to show benef- benefit. Does it change? I, look, I, I do think there's going to be a fundamental shift. You can't avoid it. it it's going to change. Um, the question becomes is, uh, you have to be careful in a tech, tech environment like this that, like, you know, you get the monopolization of things. It, it's, 
it's very dicey to say uh, how how that kind of plays out. Um, but I do think that agents uh, will be will be it could be picked on the lowest price that's available to do it. The question is, and I'm going to tell you this off the bat, if there is a lower priced way of doing it, if you remove certain a pool of agents out of the marketplace, you will drive up the cost because there may be one person available to show houses and there may be 60 people looking to do so. And if you think that's going to, it's like, it's like finding toilet paper during the pandemic, you know, <laughs> yes, you want the service, but uh, yes, you want the, the, the toilet paper, <laughs> but there's none in there to, to buy. So you will pay you extra for it. So it may drive up the price. So like the short term, yes, but it's, Yes, it's a market system. When everything becomes a market system, you know, you can't, it's, it's hard to say what that looks like. Even in the short term, the quickest, fastest buck is going to get the job done. But after everybody figures out that's the fastest, fastest, quickest buck, there's just maybe one of them or two of them, and they're working with the 15 people already, and maybe out of the lot. So I, I can't tell you, like, yes, there'll be some degree of that. Um, Maybe some new models come out of this. Uh, you know, my always thing was like, they try to Uberize everything. And if you know Uber, uh, is it cheaper to, did Uber make car, uh, getting a car cheaper? Do you think so? No, of course not. They monopolize it, then they, they, <laughs> then the cost goes up to the roof. And there's no saying that that can't happen here. And that's, I've wondered if that's not the play, um, because it can be, but you know, there's always the, the idea of, like there's someone coming to be a hero in this. Uh, and like, we're going to save, <laughs> that we're going to save people money. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Every time, every attempt that's been, it's like, you know, it's like college tuition. Oh, we're going to save people money on college tuition. Does that happen? No, it's a little higher than ever. Or we're we going to help people with rent assistance. Does it change the, the cost? No, it's higher than ever. It's these, I mean, in very rare instances, um, do these interventions get the desired result because, uh, they, they open themselves up to, um, which I think everything is kind of put them, put itself into is like monopolization. And we have to, uh, that's a real, concern that everybody should have about where this goes because if it becomes that you're going to you all you're going to see is your fees increase and then there's really no options so i i mean it does lead leave way to that i'm not saying that it's good or bad and some people may say look i mean home depot took away the mom and pop uh store you know it's just and that's could happen yeah it's like and the, the employees are paid less and you know it's not like you know you get people working in a store who can make a retirement out of working in environment work uh in retail mm -hmm. but it's cheap and because it's cheap and it's done in bulk uh um the experience would you would assume would be better i'm not sure if it is or it isn't but um in the pool shrinks so it's very hard to say where this goes in that in that regard mm -hmm. so do you see traditional real estate agents will shrink in um traditional real estate agents i do well yeah they i mean i think it's really a wholesale look at yourself i mean you have to say what um you know, I, I'm not from the real estate business, and this is why I'm in it. <laughs> so, because you have to look at it, and I look at it from the same way. It's like you don't, you don't go into anything with the idea you're not going to get put a fresh eyes on things and say to yourself, "Okay, we could improve things." This is what I could do. When, if you're industrious in the sense, you really try to define your what you're doing. Um, so, when we say traditional. Uh, I don't think anybody really operates on the same paradigm to begin with. The question is, is operationally, does the operation, does the leadership, the head going down the, the mast, 
are we spending things efficiently? Are we doing things efficiently to serve the, um, the consumer? And I think that's really the key here. Are we doing those things and um, how to efficiently uh, get them the result that they're seeking? Um, and look, it's not a, uh, but traditional, I, I, I couldn't, there's so many variants to that uh, traditional model. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the new model will look more synergistic. And if it's not, I, I, I don't know where it's going to put things. But we talked about it last time about the old hiring of agents. Yes. Uh, and like too, too many people like just like, you know, but I, there's some infrastructure set up just to do that. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I do believe at the end of the day, you can't serve people unless you focus on the consumer first and stop with all the other stuff that goes on with this business. Mm -hmm. I may get lambasted for that, but you, you got it. The other stuff has to take press. It has to take precedence now more than ever. And if it isn't, it's going to re. It, it's going to show its head somewhere. I, I can't say that it's not. It's going to. And just saying you're just just you know making it a slogan isn't enough. You, if you can't quantify it, it ain't gonna. It, it, no slogan's gonna help. Yeah. You know, you have to really quantify things that people are actually gonna be tangible and, and on site. And without that, you're not, it's very hard to maneuver uh, in, the, in, the, in the business that we're gonna be looking at moving forward. So that was a good question. Okay. Um, so how do you think these changes will affect the broader real estate industry over the next few years? <laughs> um, <laughs> It is uh, now I've been through the dot com era, yes. uh, real estate when we went from like you know the I just came in after the ad that went in two thousand six two thousand seven like I I started in the worst of the real estate market, but I developed uh, obviously dot com real estate company, and I was into the dot com everything and um, you know my biggest thing is is that. It's like the advent of artificial intelligence, uh, not maybe not to the same degree, but it, it's it's going to shape things differently. There's no doubt in my mind that this is going to shape things uh, from a very fundamental side of the business, how we're going to proceed with the business. And I think some of the strategies are going to have to be reinvented. Um, and those strategies are not going to be able to be hashed out in weeks. And, and you, you have to be a good predictor of storms. Um, and I've always, thankfully, it's one of the things I've always been. It's like, are we prepared for that change? And I think that um, it's like everything else. I, it's going to shift the business immensely. Uh, I think it's a titanic shift, uh, to put it. And it's going to be a big shift. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, and do you think these new rules will lower will result in lower home prices due to the re reduced transaction cost, or will other market factors play a larger role? This ain't gonna do anything to cost. No. No. Mm -mm. Buyers are gonna save money. Sellers may save a bit of money. You can't reinvent the wheel by changing the way things are done and expect it's like okay let's remove a couple of cylinders from a car tomorrow and then we're going to expect the engine to run perfectly sound and it's going to take more gas uh to to, to make the car run inefficiently until an efficiency develops out of it so i i mean short term you're going to see like uh because you're going to see panic um i think one of the things is you're not maybe not on the onset for the next, like this year, doesn't need any more freaking not craziness. But at the onset, it's going to be um, it's going to be drastic, uh, drastic shift, and how that plays out. I think there's a lot to shake out with this. But the shakeout will happen if um, the synergies. I'm going to keep saying, I said it for a long time, and it's the first time that I think 
synergistic relationships within your organization and your agents um, had better really be solid. And I think if you if you're overextended with with a lot of agents that you know can't really be vetted and really harnessed and getting the most out of you, gonna it's gonna be it's not gonna be a good scenario. Um, so uh, yeah, I think it's going to shift the we're gonna see a, a huge drastic shift in the in in, a, in everything we're doing. So how are you preparing for this change? I don't think it's how we've been preparing. Um, I think of it like, you know, one of the things is, is that when you, good leadership, organizational leadership will never focus on today's business alone. Um, and I have said this a long time that great leadership always has an eye on, on the horizon because the people who they who depend on they're the people who depend on me to make sure mm -hmm. that I can predict things accurately because they make a living at what they do. And if you cannot give people the confidence and the level of trust that that requires, which I take seriously, that we're better prepared than I think at any point that I've done anything in life. Well, you have a very skeptical view of things. I said, yeah, I, sometimes we'll, I'm sure we'll get back on. Yeah. So um, leadership needs to really focus on what the storms may look like, how you're going to navigate it once you're in them, and how to position yourself best once you're through them. And the problem is with storms is is that you're going to see a lot of agents moving around and i don't know what that may look like i do see it happening um because it's like now you have to focus your business that part of the business if you're not in the listing side of the business is there a question maybe i could go look on my uh well i'm gonna go look on my ipad quickly before it's too late but actually, what, what time do we got? It's almost kind of coming time, right? Oh, uh, yeah. What time is it? It is 5.47. 47. I'll see you guys. So I'll keep you here to 10. It's all right. <laughs> God is saying to you today. There we go. I got to stop with this thing <laughs> being on the Let's thing. Stop. This is like the serious okay. part of the conversation. I'm like, you know, we really got to get this. Now it's like... Uh, yeah, we're usually more gleeful, right? This is like a like yeah. a sobering. No, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like. But what? You went on the iPad. Oh yeah, so it's there. We go. Let's see what the question is. Another Friday countdown to five o'clock. Oh my god! There's a great content, guys. Thanks, Krista. Uh, Krista actually came on. That's your buddy there. Yeah, she oh. actually came on there. Thanks. Um, so yeah, yeah. So, um, getting back to the leadership part, yes. um, and we can't think of these things, um, as like a way of, uh, like slipping out of responsibility that, uh, we do provide, whether it's you or anybody else that works here or the agents that work here, you know, I don't take it lightly. And I do commit a lot of time to this in that um, the success quotients are extremely high to the best of my ability and the best of their willingness to put their put themselves out there. But if I make the field a little bit higher for them uh, and we make and we prepare for the storms and we, we, we do the right things, we develop efficiencies and we provide a quality service, which I do think is and thanks to you, of course, and all you put into this from just the beginning. Uh, and it's, it's, we're in a bit good place. Yes. And I, I, I'm more, I'm optimistic in the sense of where we, what we've done and all the measures that have been taken. And, you know, um, you know, but like people will say to me, Anthony, what are you, what are you so worried? Like it's, I said, because you, you can't, you cannot, 
as a business owner and as a responsible leader, your focus can never be, you know, we get caught looking down at what's happening right here and the horizon's full of threats that we have to address moving forward. That's, I mean, I, I, I mean look, I'll exhaust myself over those things, but I do feel like we, we prepared ourselves correctly. I think that um, developing efficiencies and some of the things that we've definitely really thrusted forward these last few months um, put us in a good position to help assist uh, what I think the shortfalls may be. So we'll be able to do more uh, with less. Um, not the same as far as so it's just necessarily based on cost. It's based on how efficient we've been able to uh, develop our our platforms to, to really reach audiences that, you know, with those have taken years. And it's not easy commitments uh, that you can't, it's, an, not, it's a very difficult um, undertaking because when we talk about building, it's like building a bridge. You can't think of building a bridge and say the traffic and like when, at some point we're gonna have to cross it. You're not thinking of like when nothing's moving to build the bridge to get everybody to the other side. You, that's a plan, that's a daily set of actions, that's architects, engineers and say, how is the best way to, and that's years. And this is not going to be, you're not going to have a knee jerk yourself into a situation that is going to immediately turn better for you as, a, as, a, as someone in this business. So you had better look for the, the types of things that, you know, that are set up to help success. And it's not going to be readily apparent because obviously when this all comes down, there's going to be a lot of hullabaloo about what they're, what, you know, oh, this particular product is going to do this and this particular product is going to do this. And, this, and there's going to be a lot of people led down a lot of paths when there's confusion. And I do think that um, uh, people could be led astray quickly. And it could wind up costing them dearly. And there's going to be predatory ways of, you know, people who are in the business for a while may struggle with this. And it could be, I don't think it's going to be a fun time. I really don't. I don't think it's going to be a fun time. And, you know, we, we can dismiss it all we like, uh, but I don't think it's going to be a fun time. And I don't think it's going to be a great time, you know, for sellers as well, because it's going to drive the efficiency downward. So it's going to take long. There's no doubt about it. I think it's the number one factor is a house is not going to sell nearly as quick, which then subjects it to market volatility, which is a possibility. I said this before about low volume markets. If you have a low volume market and then all of a sudden you slow that market down, let's just say somebody really wants to, you know, not experience a downturn. They're like, okay, we're pretty much in the place where we want to be, but we can't move the house quick enough because there's not enough activity really vetting the system. Mm -hmm. It's like moving it without another wheel. And that in the short term will probably be the biggest problem moving forward. So there is a shift that's going to be, that's where the shift is going to be. Yes, you could do buyer agency. And yes, you could do all these things. I don't, and I'm going to tell you uh, from my experience in doing this, is that we're talking about a very proficient few that are capable. I'm not saying that nobody's capable or like, what is it? there's a proficient few. It takes a lot to do that. And uh, yes, you have to define yourself. And the work, you know, to some people may say it's like, uh, it, it's going to be challenging and there's going to be things that are going to be done that people aren't going to like or see that, but you have to, it has to be addressed head on. Um, and for homeowners, you better think long and hard about what the process looks like and look at everything that's going to be done. Because if you're not doing that, you're going to find yourself in a circumstance that you don't like. And too many people, there are too many people right now, that go into this process not asking the right questions. Why I know that? Because I probably have sat with about, over the last two years, probably about 200 for sale by owner clients in the last two years alone, maybe 100 a year. Uh, and I can tell you off the bat, every question that I've been told has been what's the process and why does it look like this? And why am I doing this? And then I, they, most of them will say they've had a bad experience. And I say, yeah, I said, well, the problem is, is that it's not like buying shoes. Uh, you have to really put yourself into the idea that 
um, uh, what 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 should this look like? It's a, it's a it's a it's a in most cases it's, we're talking in New York metro area anyway. It's a three quarters of a million. That's like where the, the standard number is now. Uh, you know, maybe give or take a hundred thousand dollars here or there. But that's not um, that's not small. That's not small change. Uh, and I you know uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a change. And I think people need to get that, uh, get that part of it. I don't know if there's any other questions. Um, there is. We're running out of time. Lady is struggling, seeming uninterested, seeming interested and engaged. Maybe she was kidnapped. We'll never know. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> it is fun. Actually, she's more uncomfortable. It's the chair that makes her do that. We're getting chairs that will be a lot more comfortable. I'm kind of, uh, so no, she's engaged. Stop it, please. I, 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 I have this habit of reading this stuff. I shouldn't read it out loud. I know, but it's, it's funny. I think that, you know, uh, <laughs> no, no, but you see, wherever you, he must be central time. It's already past five. We do this till six. It's actually almost that time. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. So, um, true, School, the stools are uncomfortable. Yeah, especially when you're sitting in them for an hour. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> it's uh, like, trying to focus on that. Thanks for the likes, guys. I appreciate it. So, just so everybody knows, we cross back and forth between, um, between Facebook and uh, TikTok. Yes. TikTok Live. We got yes, a, we do. We got a, we got a good audience on both, actually. Today. We did. Very yeah. good. And then we appreciate, okay. appreciate it. And hopefully, if you have a question about what this should look like, or or what you think, because I think we hit on some very key topics yes. as we close this out on this very very eventful August uh, afternoon evening, um, and with this where we're going to be going in the future. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna, not going to tell you I'm a bit excited about it. In that sense, I am. I really do think we're we're, we're really really prepared. I think, I think so. we got a lot of people new people on board that are going to help facilitate that growth moving forward. I, agree. I feel like we're positioned correctly for what this is. And um, we hope to be of service to like those people who see us fit to do a superior job. Mm -hmm. But check us out on our most social media platforms, which are Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, YouTube. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Check out YouTube. We're doing some pretty interesting things with neighborhoods. Yeah. We're all over the place. We're growing wings. We are growing wings. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. you guys have a great night. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you follow along. Yeah. And, um, you know, Carrie's going to get a much more comfortable stool. And, you know, I'm, I'm lobbying uh, of the, the, the budgetary people for, for improved. <laughs> Uh, like our, our new setup now, yes. we're really, we've gotten better mics, uh, better mics, better, better equipment uh, to move forward. Now we just need to get the squeaky chairs and the, yes. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so that's where we are, folks. You have a great afternoon, and um, we'll see you uh, next week with the New Jersey stats and see where that leaves us. All right, have a great night, guys. <laughs>